and welcome. Eamon Darcy is my name and the founder and operator of Quequa, the Quantum Education Centre of West Australia. And wow, we're already up to video lesson six on quantum gates. And this is going to be a lot more practical. Everything we've done so far has been theoretical. And this is very practical. But I did want to tie it all together where, where the first uh, five lessons have led us. So we started off with superposition. That's where... A, a quantum particle is in many places at once, emanating from the double slit. I'm going to show you quantum gates, in fact, one quantum gate called the Hadamard gate, probably the most used in quantum computing, which puts a subatomic particle into superposition. And then you've got entanglement, which is where you've got a sub uh, quantum particle on Earth and the quantum particle at the other end of the galaxy. And when you move one, it impacts the other. And that allows us to do multiple actions in quantum computing by the one quantum gate. So one quantum gate can affect many, many, many qubits. Very exciting. I then went on to the interpretation, so the video lesson three, and the uh, no one knows <laughs> is the truth. No one knows how superposition works, how quantum entanglement works. We know it's real. Bell's inequality, which I've done previous presentations on, on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, by the way. Bell's inequalities and the CHSH gain and the Paris Merman gain, for that matter, all show that something is really going on at a quantum level. Einstein disputed that. But the interpretations, basically, the Copenhagen and the many worlds, are very exciting, very mysterious, but they're the best we have at the moment. Video lesson four, we spoke about the very basics of linear algebra and how by using linear algebra, we can move a superposition into a different superposition just by applying, you know, a matrix, basically. And I gave you a list of matrices, which, co which correlates with a list of quantum gates, which we'll go over now. And then video lesson five was on the block sphere, which is how we graphically, three-dimensionally, in a sphere, a way we can graphically represent the movement of this, what we call state transformations. But today, what I'm going to do is actually use a real quantum computer for my VM. I'm going to give you the link. I'm going to show you how to set up your own quantum gates that will give superposition, entanglement, and already start performing an algorithm. An algorithm is merely a group of uh, quantum gates. And I also mentioned in one of the uh, lessons, I can't remember which one, that the way we physically do this is by sending out a microwave burst to this quantum particle in superposition that with depending on the intensity and the duration of the microwave burst, the microwave pulse will affect the superposition, which translates to a change on the block sphere. And then when you do all of this together, you can do some amazing computations. And I think you'll start understanding that. But look, let me, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to set my clock. And 10 minutes, and I'll take you through what's called the IBM Q experience. Okay, so I've got an awful lot to get through in 10 minutes, so I'll go quickly. Of course, you can always replay the video. I'm starting from Google, so straight in Google, we can just type in IBM 
Q experience, Q for quantum, of course, and click on that, and it'll take us to, um, I mean, there's the link if you want to go straight to it, quantumcomputingibm.com, and that takes us straight into the program. I've already signed up and signed in. So you'll have to get an account from IBM, totally free, and just the usual way you just type in a password, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, uh, what I'll start off is by I'll launch Composer on the far left side of the screen. So this is what happens when you go to Composer. It really is fantastic. Right now. Okay, it's a little bit full on at first. I've got eight minutes, 13 left. Really, it's just drag and drop from your palette here. These are all quantum gates, the Hadamard, the Knot, the c knot, et cetera, et cetera. And you really can just start playing with them. And I'm going to take you through a very, very simple quantum, two quantum gates, which is the algorithm for entangling two qubits. But what I want to show you here is you've got these lines here, which rather look like the lines from a, a verse of music. These are actually qubits. So this is the first qubit, second, and third. And then this is actually, uh, because it's two lines, and a C means that it's a classical bit, because sometimes you... When you finish your measurement, you can put it onto a classical bit and then transfer in the normal way. But these, this is one quantum bit. Remember, uh, I was talking about state transformations. We will be, we will start, uh, you always start in what's called, you initialize it to zero. So it's like, uh, if you like, starting at the North Pole in our Earth uh, analogy. And then we'll be rotating through the uh, block sphere. So look, let's just start. So they're initialized as here. Let's just start by putting, and all I'm doing is dragging and dropping. I'm going to be use a Hadamard gate. Now a Hadamard gate has put this first qubit into superposition. Isn't it amazing? You just put one gate. What will be happening in the quantum computer when I run this is that a microwave burst representing a Hadamard gate will hit a real quantum particle. Here, it's showing me that the because it's now in superposition, there's a 50-50 chance it'll be one or zero. And, and this is, again, showing me the uh, measurement basis where it's a one and a zero. The three numbers here represent the three qubits, very, because there's three lines here. And very important to note that the first qubit is on always on the right. And then you have the second and the third, but you always start from the right. And that can get tricky, trust me. But it's now in superposition. And all I'm going to do is drag over a knot gate. And now I've entangled these two qubits. They are actually entangled. They are as if they were one entity, 4 minutes 35. Uh, and what I'll do is, now this is measurement. And all I have to do again is drag it on. And I'm measuring the superposition which you may remember, then it collapses. The superposition, it's the collapse of the wave function and it becomes a zero or one. But what I wanna show you, I'm coming up to the right-hand side now. I'm gonna show you where I can run it on a simulator or a, I can run on a simulator or on a real quantum computer. Because I know you want me to, I'll, I'll stick with the, quantum computer. And you can see I can choose many here. There's IBM, Nairobi, Oslo, Manila, Quito. 
oh my God, I'm looking at all the pending jobs. It's going to take too long, but never mind. It's very busy at the moment. But you and you can pay more money and there can be other dedicated quantum computers. But these are real computers. This is seven qubits, seven qubits, and so on. Uh, what I will do, and, and you, you can see the details of IBM Nairobi here. It's loading it up. Uh, okay, but I can choose my settings, which is I'll just leave it on name, on the uh, main. I'll call it quick work test, and I won't bother putting any tags in. And I'm now going to, I'm right down at the bottom right hand corner now. I'm going to run it on IBM Nairobi. And, and that now is setting up, I can, I can the job's been sent. If I click on here, I can see that there's a pending of quick with test onto IBM Nairobi, and I can do many, many things with it. It's because of the amount of backup, it's going to take a while before it gets there. But isn't that amazing that somewhere in the world, in a quantum computer in Nairobi, I might add that they're not always resident in the city that they say they are. There are quantum, I mean, have quantum computers all over the world. And here's the code that went on. Here's the diagrammatic, here's the actual algorithm. And you saw how easy it was for me to put a real qubit in superposition and then entangle two qubits which means I can already start doing some really funky things. I've got one minute, 10 seconds left. But so the file's gone. Uh, I could have simulated it. I can call it something. But look, that's what I've actually now done is remotely operated a real quantum computer from IBM who will have sent microwave pulses onto two qubits and entangled them. So one of these qubits could be on the moon and one could be in my house and they will be inexplicably, mysteriously entangled that they act as if they were just one entity. And there's amazing things you can do with that. Wow, that was a quick run through because I've got 18 seconds now. I hope that's shown you how easy it is to get, get an account with IBM and then get started immediately, knowing as much as you know now. There goes my timer, that horrible noise, but I'll be doing many more of these and in greater detail. But again, I'm keeping it to 10 minutes so that you don't get bored and... It doesn't go over the top, but hopefully it will show you how exciting all of this is because I have just entangled two quantum particles that we can now start doing very heavy computations with. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. Thank you very much indeed, and I'll talk to you soon.